Hi everyone, it's Renee with Delaney Jane Cards. Welcome back to my channel. Today I have a video for you. I was just kind of needing a refresher in my creativity and I decided to just make a card. There is actually no reason for this card. Sometimes, sometimes we just need no reason for a card just to get lost in the coloring or whatever you're doing. Um, I wanted to show you, this is a Stamping Bella gray rubber stamp, and you see how it has that foam on the back? That is um, kind of why you take the black foam mat out of your Misty or stamp positioner, uh, because that it's about the same thickness. So if you're ever wondering why you would take that mat out, that would be it. So here I am going to stamp this cute little baby on this craft card stack. Now this stamp, um, I've had since 2013. It's an old one. I purchased this because I wanted to use it in some scrapbooks of my daughter um, as she was growing up. I will tell you this is probably only the second or third time I've used it um, because, well, Delaney did not get to grow up. Um, I also am using Ink on 3. Um, ink here and I showed the cover of it. I had some hand sanitizer on my hand and I like touched the top of the, the ink pad and it, it took the paint off the top of the ink pad. So I, I don't know. Uh, just, just don't do that. <laughs> so I'm stamping this on, um, this craft card stock and so far I'm doing great. It looks pretty good. It's a very fine line image. And I'm getting, you know, pretty decent coverage. Uh, after I stamped this um, later on, I um, for future cards, I did re-ink this ink pad because it definitely needed it. Um, so here I'm thinking this is probably like my last inking before I go ahead and color this. Um, but this corner up here didn't get stamped very well. And then I, I ended up getting the edge of the rubber stamp on my... Paper. I didn't re-stamp it. I'll show you um, that I tried to remove it. It didn't work. I just moved on and later on I don't think it's super noticeable. So sometimes if you have a mistake you can use like this sand eraser here. This is the Tonmo Mono sand eraser. But it didn't work on this craft card stock. It didn't even like budge this at all. And I was like well I'm just gonna keep going with it because that's I don't know. That's how I felt. So I have used Prismacolor pencils in the past, and I have had a 48 count um, Prismacolor pencil pack for years, and I never really thought about getting anything bigger. But I did want grays, and then my friend Leanne over at Leanne Gets Crafty, she sent me this pack of pencils because she said she never used them, and I was going to give them a shot for uh, this card and I'm really glad I did. Now I just have this simple Prismacolor pencil sharpener. I know you can get like the electric one or whatever but I just want to show you this is super easy and simple and you don't have to plug it in anywhere and I don't know it just it's simple. Simple is good sometimes. So here um, a lot of times when I'm doing colored pencil stuff um, especially an image like this where there's just a lot going on. I like to kind of, um, isolate. Yeah, I guess that's the right word. Isolate a specific area to color. Here I'm going to add this really light color to the edges of the skin to kind of just note for me where the skin is going to be. Uh, I will have all the pencils listed in the description below. Uh, I did end up using one entire tray of pencils, not as they were just like laid out originally, but it filled the whole tray. You'll also see uh, one of our cats decided that she wanted to take a look and that is Pepper. And she, she's not the one that meows in my videos ever, but she was very curious and um, wanted to see what was actually going on in this new space that I have here. Uh, so I did leave a little bit of that in for you to see her. She's just a black um, house cat. Very sweet. So I did pull the color cam in here so you can get a better idea of what I'm doing with the pencil, um, how the lead is actually hitting the paper, and the color that is coming off. I will say that the color 
that the paper is here, um, the uh, exposure, the saturation, the, you know, how it looks on the screen isn't right. I didn't want to take this clip out, but I, it does come back and you'll be able to see the color a little bit better, um, a little bit um, further in the video here. Not, not much further, but so what I had done is taken that light peach color and had colored the skin, you know, pretty much all the edges of the skin just so that it would look slightly different than um, the background, just to give me a place to start from. And this is actually what it looks like. This is more of the the correct color. I'm not sure what was going on with my camera, but like I said, I didn't want to toss that out. So here I'm going with the um, going in with those grays. Um, when I color with Copics, a lot of times I use a BV uh, under my shadows. I've even used grays but I have missed that with pencils because I did not have a gray or any grays in my um, 48 pack. But now that I have this beautiful 72 pack pencils, I had some grays. So I thought I would give it a try. And I left all of this in because I wanted you to see the layers that went into coloring this and how when I'm touching this pencil to this cardstock, it's really light. I'm actually hardly putting any pressure at all. And I'm just putting in these shadows. I will say I got a little heavy handed with the gray and this baby does end up looking very, very gray before I um, bring the baby back to more like the peachy pink tones that baby skin is. Um, but here I'm just going in and, you know, putting in those shadows. And I do think in the end that all of this that I did added to kind of the realistic look of um, the baby's skin. But you could skip all of this and just use, you know, brown <laughs> or even a blue violet like I would with Copics to pull in the, the shadows of the skin. So I just, I went around the edges, the, the hair, it's so wispy that I could kind of put it in wherever I wanted. I didn't need to like really follow anything in particular. And, and there are spaghetti noodles here too. So that's, um, this stamp is actually called Buschetti, which I think is super adorable. Um, it's designed by Mo Manning. And I'm not even sure if Mo Manning still designs stamps, but they were some of my favorites um, way back when. Uh, the first time I did use this stamp was for a thank you card for the CICU nurses that took care of Delaney um, when she was up in the cardiac ICU um, at Children's Hospital in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And I believe I've used it one other time. I just was really drawn to this. Like I said, I was making a card because I needed something uh, that I could express my creativity. I wanted to play with these pencils. Uh, it, there's really no reason behind this card. And sometimes we just need that. So here I was blending out that dark gray with a lighter gray and here's an even lighter gray and this is where I feel like I kind of got a little heavy-handed and pulled this gray in so much that the baby actually ends up looking very very gray and uh, almost zombie like <laughs> which I thought was really funny um, but I did leave this all in because like I said I do think these layers really added to the end result the baby's skin and I think that it helped create um I don't know, the perfect, I don't know about perfect, but a very good skin tone, um, a good depth of color in the skin tone. But I wanted you also to see that here I have colored just the skin. And you can see how um, that makes a big difference to just cover color the same thing through the whole picture. Um, here I'm trying to make this a little more pink with this pink because it was definitely very gray. Um, but you can isolate the different pieces of this image now by coloring the skin first. I'm able to see where all that spaghetti is. I'm able to um, see where the spoon is in the corner and the pieces of the diaper that are visible in the bowl. And you can see all of this stuff that was kind of just a jumbled mess of lines to begin with. Um, so I do find that that's very helpful when I'm coloring, especially something like colored pencil that isn't something that um, I have to worry about blending while it's wet. 
uh, or wait for dry time or anything like that. So here, baby was still very, very gray. So I decided to bring in this brown tone here. And this is where you'll be able to absolutely see the skin warm up. Uh, and those shadows actually get pushed back in and it look much more realistic because they're underneath that brown tone. And I do this a lot when I'm using my Copics. Use blue violet underneath kind of my deepest shadow. It's more of a gray shadow, which is more realistic. Not that this is a realistic picture, but in reality, this is much more realistic than some of the critters that we color, you know? So I wanted that uh, kind of... Um, more natural skin tone on this. And I do really like this card. I think that uh, it was very good for me to get lost in the coloring. Now, this is a very long video. I know that um, not everybody likes long videos. So I will have um, chapters in the description box so you can click ahead and, you know, get past the coloring if you'd like. Um, but I know some people like watching coloring, especially colored pencil coloring. I don't think that there's a lot of that um, out on the internet for us right now. And, um, uh, sometimes it's nice to watch somebody color, even if it's just me talking and <laughs> showing you how I turned a gray baby into a not gray baby. But here you can really see that baby warm up. Um, the definite difference between the arm that is complete and the arm that is not complete. You can see just how, uh, gray that arm looks and then you can see how warm and peach tone and healthy that that baby skin looks where I've already added that brown in. Uh, so this card um, has no embellishments on it. It um, is flat. It's, you know, simple. It was just coloring. Um, this video, like I said, is a long video, but it would have been a lot longer. <laughs> I use two camera angles when I do something like this where I'm coloring and I just leave it run. I film directly to my computer so it can, you know, record as long as I want, as long as my computer has space. Um, so I had nearly two hours of work time into this card. So that means I had nearly four hours of footage and I, it was definitely a challenge. I haven't really edited much lately. I haven't made very many videos recently. So it's kind of um, a challenge for me to see how my editing is and uh, see if I can tighten it up and get it right and, you know, make a video that's worth watching that somebody would want to watch. So you'll have to let me know, did you enjoy this coloring? Because um, I love coloring, but um, not everybody does. So here, um, a little bit off screen, you can't really see it too well because I haven't filmed in a long time, but I was adding a little bit of pink to the baby's cheeks and then I realized that I was off screen. So here I'm lightening it up with that lighter pink tone, kind of blending it in because babies should have pink cheeks. I think that that makes them absolutely adorable. And I did add a little bit of pink to the baby's nose. Now, it's cute. But there is no spaghetti sauce on this baby. <laughs> so I will add spaghetti sauce to the baby. But here you can see how warm the baby's skin tone is. You definitely can see everything being isolated. The bib, um, the bowl, the spaghetti, the spoon. Everything is very isolated. The baby's hair. Um, which is where I'm going to move on to next. Um, my kids have... Uh, my three youngest kids had um, very uh, strawberry blonde hair when they were tiny. And as they have grown, um, their hair has become less strawberry blonde. Um, my four-year-old, my newly four-year-old, he has more strawberry blonde hair than his um, sister that is right underneath him and his brother that is right um, older than him. Um, but they all started out with this kind of uh, red tone in their hair when they were tiny. So I thought that I would uh, play on that and kind of use that as my color scheme. So I used this um, auburn kind of color. I think it's like a sienna, something like that. I, like I said, I'll have the list of pencils that I used in the description box below. And then I needed a darker tone because hair is not flat. And you can see here I am, you know, using the pencil and um, making lines in here like they are hair. 
I could have used probably a sharper pencil and gotten much more distinct lines, but um, I think it's fine. I think it turned out well. And uh, for my first color pencil coloring in a very, very long time, I was kind of pleased with myself. I thought it was good enough. Um, after I put those in, then I wanted to lighten it up, so I did add a little bit of a golden yellow to um, the hair. It just added a little more life, a little more depth to it, and I think it definitely brought the hair um, to life a little bit more. And I enjoyed that color combination very much for this uh, baby's hairstyle, which is, I think, called messy. <laughs> I think it's called after dinner messy hair. So here we have um, hair and skin taken care of. It's a big deal for me um, to be back on YouTube. I know I took a very long break. Sometimes um, behind the scenes, you don't realize how hard somebody is absolutely working to get things taken care of. Um, I was working far too hard at far too many things and something needed to go for a few minutes. And it was YouTube. YouTube needed, um, we needed to just take a break from each other and, um, I'm hoping that I can be back now and things can be good. Um, so far so good. Um, so I'm sorry if I, if you missed me, I'm sorry that I didn't put out videos, but you know what? Sometimes we need to take care of us first. And it was very, very important, uh, at the, the season that I was in life that I just took the time. So here I'm adding that spaghetti sauce to the baby. I put a darker red down first, just very lightly. And I'm going to blend it out with a, a much more orangey red because spaghetti sauce is kind of that orangey red color. And I guess I would probably have not given my baby spaghetti sauce because of this. But I also have been known to give them um, ice cream cones in the backseat of the car because, you know, everything is washable. You know, so sometimes... But I thought I would add a little bit of spaghetti sauce to our little baby here. Um, when I showed Addie this baby, she told me it was for sure Addie. And I think it does look like her a lot, very much. She's got that wild, crazy hair that I always put up in pigtails. And if it's not up in pigtails, it looks just like this, which is crazy. And if I give her spaghetti, I'm sure she would also look like this. So here I'm taking one of those peach tones and just kind of blending out the edges of that spaghetti sauce. And then I'm going to add beautiful blue eyes. Now I love how these pencils look on craft cardstock. They are creamy and silky and very opaque. And that works very, very well for something like these blue eyes here. Uh, it'll also work really well when we add the white pencil. To add depth to the eyes, I did grab a darker blue, and I'm going to use that here just a little bit in there to add a little bit of darker shading, add some, a little bit of dimension. Now in an image like this, where you have lots of shading in the skin, and the hair has contrast, and there's shading to the spaghetti sauce that's on the, on the image, you don't have to shade everything. Um, and that goes for any image, um, no matter how you're coloring it. Uh, and, you know, personal style also is included in this. You don't have to shade everything. Not everything has to be perfect. Your eye, as the, the consumer of the image, um, the person that's viewing it, is going to go to the things that are very well done. Uh, the things that have the shading. And your eye is going to allow you to skip over the things that aren't exactly shaded perfectly, uh, like this bib here. I could leave it absolutely flat. It isn't going to make that big of a difference in the, in the entire image in the end. I did add some shading just because I had the pencils out and they were right here, but I might have just filled it in had I not had the pencils available to me. It isn't going to make that big of a difference when it comes down to it. It's your image. It's your card. It's your time that you're giving yourself uh, away from whatever the mundane is that you're hiding from. Is it laundry? Is it dishes? Um, is it your daytime job? Is it, you know, whatever it is that you are getting your escape from with coloring, it's not going to make that big of a difference if you don't shade it. Um, 
It just, it isn't. If you can try it once, just experiment for me. Color something, color the majority of it, just take your time, color the shading, you know, do all of the things that you need to do, and then just leave one tiny bit, just colored in. You don't have to actually shade it, just color it in. And tell me that it makes a huge difference because it isn't gonna, it isn't gonna, it, you're not gonna focus on it. I mean, you as the artist or colorist or card maker might focus on it, but somebody else isn't going to. In the end, that's not going to be what matters. Five years down the road, you're going to look at that image and you're going to think you did a great job coloring it. You're going to be very proud of yourself for what you did. You're not going to doubt yourself or be hard on yourself because something isn't exactly perfect. Here I'm adding more mess as we talk about not perfect. I'm adding more mess to the baby because we couldn't have a perfectly clean bib on a very messy baby. And then I thought what would be funny is to have some spaghetti sauce on her or his foot um, and leg and I thought that would be cute. So to keep the image kind of the same color family I decided that I would use yellow for this bowl down here and I just have two yellows and here's a pretty good example. I did use two colors on this bowl but it doesn't look shaded in the end and it doesn't matter. I mean you can tell me you tell me in the comments, do you think it really matters? Do you think that I should have shaded the bowl much more? Or in reality, in the entire scheme of things, in the whole picture of it all, does it really matter? Because I don't think it does. I think what I did is stepped away from laundry and dishes and deadlines and all the stressors that go with being a mom. And I colored. I colored for two hours and it felt great. And I needed it. And it's been a while since I just have done that. I found myself already stuck in the no creativity zone. I didn't really have any uh, mind for creating. I would look at items that I needed to work with and just stare at them and like have no idea what I could do with them. So I decided that since I was drawn to these colored pencils and I really wanted to work with an image that I could color, that I would pull one out that has kind of a spot near and dear to my heart and I would just color it. I hadn't actually even planned on filming it, uh, just coloring. And I, I did end up turning the camera on, as you see, and then turned two cameras on. And I decided that I would even edit it and voice it over, which is what I'm doing now. And I will upload it for you to see because um, I was very proud of myself for stepping away from a deadline, from the laundry, from the dishes, from vacuuming, from changing diapers and getting kids dressed and making beds and all of the things that go along with, with everything that goes on and just taking the time to, to color and enjoy myself. I needed it and you might need it too. Don't ever be hard on yourself because you need time, whether it be time to sit in color, whether it be time away from something like YouTube or, you know, the dishes sit for an extra day. Give yourself some grace. Life is hard. Uh, what we've been going through as a global unit in the last year and a half has been exceptionally hard. And um, I'm proud of you for, for being where you are today. And Proud of you for, for making it through every single day. And so far, your success rate at making it through every single day has been 100%. And that is astonishing and amazing and something to be celebrated. So give yourself grace. You know, Don't be too hard on yourself when it takes you two hours to color something. And um, just be okay with it. You know, life is too short to be, to be unhappy. You know, life is too short. So here I'm adding a little bit of spaghetti sauce to these noodles because I thought, oh, it looks a little funny that I just colored them in and the baby's covered in sauce. So I'm adding just a little bit here. I think in the end, I really love this image and I love how it turned out and I adore how it turned out on colored pencil or uh, colored pencil on this craft. So remember that little smeary mark over there by her hair? I needed to do something so that it like disappeared, became part of the image, something. And since I had these gray pencils and I really wanted to play with them and kind of 
uh, use gray pencils. I guess maybe make up for all the time I didn't have gray pencils. I decided I was going to do kind of a smeary, smoky background behind this baby. So I'm just using the darker gray. And these are the th same three um, dark gray. No, same three cool gray. What are they? I think they were French gray <laughs> uh, color pencils that I used in the skin tones. But um, now I'm going to add a little bit of a shadow behind the baby. So I'm just going around and kind of doing a little smudgy line all the way around um, where there would be, you know, shadow maybe reflecting in the wall or um, to get this baby to stand up off of the paper. In doing this, I will eventually kind of blur that mistake that I made when I stamped. It's not going to go away. And, uh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I mean... We are all flawed, so why can't our art be flawed just slightly? Um, so I I will kind of camouflage it, but it's not going to go away. And you know what? Come at me. Pick it out. Pick it apart. Tell me how terrible it is because I'm happy with it, so go for it. Tell me, tell me how terrible it is to leave that little smudgy in there because you know what? It's not. <laughs> it's not. It's not terrible at all, and sometimes we need to, you know, give ourselves grace. So this is my new kind of mode, my new, I, um, not I, I guess, ideal on crafting. It's good that it looks good. It's good that you made something that looks beautiful, but it doesn't have to be perfect. It also is kind of uh, impossible. Those are impossible standards to hold ourselves to in everything. If it has to be perfect, your art shouldn't have to be perfect. Art is messy and creative and brilliant. And even though it's on a little tiny card, it's still art. You know, this image was just lines and look at it. It's not lines anymore. It's, it's an image. So give yourself grace, you know, don't, don't worry too much about it being perfect. If you enjoyed making it, it's perfect. If your recipient enjoys receiving it, it's perfect. I got a card in the mail today from a friend that's learning how to make cards. And it is probably my most valued possession to date. Um, it's far from perfect. It's, it's beautiful. She put every little bit of her in it and created something that she was proud to send me. And I love it. It is hanging up in my craft room in a place of honor. And it's going to stay there forever because her artwork deserves that. Your artwork deserves that. But also, if you make something for somebody... Don't be sad if they do end up throwing it away. Enjoy the process. It's uh, this card in particular that I'm making. It was about the process. It was about coloring. It was about losing myself in something that wasn't a mom job for a little bit. So if I send this to somebody and they end up throwing it away, I don't care. I mean, it might hurt my feelings slightly, but the big grand schema thing, which is everything we're talking about, is it, it brought me joy to make it. It brought them joy to receive it. And, you know, everybody was, everybody had joy. So it doesn't matter if it ends up in the trash eventually. So here, after I had this smoky um, background and I decided I need a, a couple of spots that, that needed a little more depth, um, just so that everything looked, um, I guess, better. <laughs> Follow your gut when you're making something. You don't have to follow all the rules. Follow your gut. If you think it looks good, if you worked your hardest, if you tried your best, uh, if you enjoyed doing it, if your recipient's going to love it, if you made it specifically for them or not, it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. You don't have to, you don't have to have perfection for it to be perfect. I know that sounds kind of funny, but it's true. You know? This card, in the end, is perfect. Smudge and all. It's perfect with the extra gray I put in the baby's skin. It's perfect with the lack of shading on the bowl. It's, it's just perfect because of what it did for me. And I use crafting as therapy. And 
you know, I got to the point where it wasn't therapeutic anymore to, to make cards. I mean, my channel is Delaney Jane Cards. It's named after my daughter Delaney, who passed away. And I, I did this to, you know, kind of bring awareness to parents that have lost children, but also to, you know, to bring peace to my soul, to do something in her honor, to spread her name. You know, I made some promises to her and this channel kind of helped me, you know, bring joy and spread her name and say it every day. And, um, I, I thought, you know, it make her proud of me because I was sharing my love of something and how to do something and teaching. Um, so that's what this channel does for me. But, but even, even though that's what it was doing for me, it got overwhelming and, and to be too much. So sometimes it's okay to take a break and just color and enjoy yourself. And in the process here, I got a brand new craft room in my house. Um, which has been very inspirational and wonderful and um, very good for my creativity. So sometimes change it up too. You know, you usually craft at the in front of the TV, take it to the dining room table or, you know, color, color in the car when you're on a road trip or, you know, something like that. Just something to change it up a little bit. I think, um, I think we get in the mundane and then it becomes kind of a chore instead of, um, something wonderful and fun to do. So after I um, went back around and added a little bit of darker, I added just even a little more dark underneath the baby here so that it would kind of be a shadow um, underneath where the baby was sitting and then kind of blended it out because I liked the way that um, the pencil looked when it was smooth. Uh, here I'm done coloring. Okay, there's no more coloring. And I put the image back into my mini Misty and I had left the stamp where it was. And I'm going to use this ink on three black on ink. And I made sure I took that off. Didn't want to get that smudge there again. And I stamped it down and put the lines kind of back in the image and did it a couple times. And this is why I end up refilling this um, ink pad later is because it's definitely not giving me the best, um, cleanest image, you know, nicest lines, blackest, deepest. So, um, I decided that since I was going to color over it no more, um, that I would use my VersaFine Onyx Black and uh, stamp this. And I was very careful not to get it on the edge of that stamp. I did not want that line to be on there. Although you can still see it in the background, I didn't want to enhance it anymore. Um, adding the black lines back into a color pencil image makes a huge difference. Uh, here I was lining up the sentiment. And I wanted to show you this trick. So I just kind of put a little bit of ink on it and I'm going to stamp it here onto my Misty and make sure that it is straight and then I'm going to wipe it off. <laughs> I love that the inside of the Misty is wipeable. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and place my card panel inside. And then when I stamp this, I know that the image is going to be straight or the wording is going to be straight and it kind of grounds my image. And I think it says it all. Everything that I said in this video, um, everything that's been going on in my life, Sometimes life can just get messy and, um, and it does and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to have the mess every once in a while. It's just okay. So here I'm just adding this panel to a piece of black cardstock, leaving a tiny little border all the way around. And that was my card. It is the whole entire card. I hope you enjoyed it. I know it was a very long video and I appreciate you sticking around with me. I am enjoying creating again. And I hope that, um, I hope you enjoy creating too. And as I always say, give cards generously. Bye.